Rebecca of Pocket Full of Posies. Hey buddy. And I decided I would like to try to make some historically inspired, not necessarily historically accurate, Disney costumes. Um, and so I wanted to just use fabrics. <laughs> Thank you, Hercules. <laughs> I, I wanted to just use fabrics and materials that I already had on hand. And so I started out with this uh, Snow White inspired costume. I decided to use a pattern by Reconstructing History, um, the fruit seller, since I had made it before, so I was pretty familiar, and it's pretty simple. Um, I just used materials that I already had, um, and I decided, instead of making Snow White's cape, the red cape, I decided to give her a red apron instead. And so, um, I hope you enjoy watching my construction and there will be some photos and uh, a little video um, of me wearing the costume at the end. Thank you! My first step in creating this historically inspired Snow White costume was to cut out the bodice of the fashion fabric which is a dark blue crepe back satin. I'm sure it's Polly, it was in my stash. And the bodice is only two pieces, which is great. Um, makes it easy to put together. I then cut out the bodice um, of the in the interlining fabric, which is a light canvas. I think it might even be burlap. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It was again in the sash. And then I cut out the bodice in the lining material, which is just kind of a tan colored broadcloth. Next, I pinned and then to so I could flat line the interlining to the fashion fabric, and I sewed that on my machine with a the longest stitch length, so like a basting stitch, um, to create so the interlining and the fashion fabric are now treated as one. Next I sewed the side seams of the lining and then the side seams of the now flat lined bodice and then went on to sew the shoulder seams of both the lining and the bodice. And then I have some kitty snuggles with Lucius because he was feeling needy. I cut some plastic boning um, for to put in the side seams and I inserted that into ch some channels I made just by sewing down the seam allowance. Um, in the side seams of the lining. Then I pinned the lining to the bodice around the neckline and down the center front on both sides. So I decided I wasn't going to worry with historical construction. I was just going to do it as fast as I could <laughs> and it, it went pretty fast I mean I, I started it in the afternoon on a Saturday and worked until I don't know I don't know how many hours altogether but I got it done by Sunday at some time some point on Sunday
then I sewed the lining down. And then I sewed some boning channels down the center front. And again, I was just going for as fast as possible and I just went ahead and sewed it down so that you can the, the stitching is visible but I'm not all that concerned then I inserted the boning Then I decided to use a decorative stitch around the neckline on the front, oh, well, around the entire neckline. Um, my machine was having some issues, I'm not sure, so they all didn't come out even, but unless you're super, super close to it, it's not that noticeable. But I think it adds a nice touch. Then I folded the lining and bodice materials towards each other so that the raw edges were encased and um, just used some of those uh, quilting clips to hold that together. I then used an awl to make eyelet holes. I did eight on each side, so 16 all together. I went ahead and just hand sewed those. Um, I wasn't particularly neat. I just kind of did them fast. I think I got all 16 done in about an hour, I would say, something like that. Then I used a whip stitch around that arm side um, to attach the lining to the bodice. Then I pleated the skirt fabric to the bodice and I just used a poly taffeta, kind of a antique gold color that was in my stash. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Then I sewed that skirt onto the bodice on the machine. Next, I whip stitched the lining down on the inside of the bodice. So 
since I decided to make an apron um, instead of a cape, <laughs> I just took some broadcloth, red broadcloth, and pleated it um, to some bias tape. Then I sewed that all, removed the pins as I went, and realized the thread had broken and it didn't sew anything, so all of my pleats came out. This is why you're supposed to base the pleats down first, but. So then I frustrated, was frustrated, and I uh, just gathered, um, gathered that fabric. And I, uh, then I had a family get together online and while we were all talking and chatting, I uh, sewed the apron to the bias tape um, to make the waist band or the ties. And, um, and then I, I used a back set stitch to do that. And then I whip stitched it down on the inside and hemmed it. And uh, then the apron was done. Next I decided to, why not, add some gold braid. <laughs> so I pinned it down around the, uh, up the front and around the neckline and then I just tacked it down quickly. And so I got my wig on, got some makeup on, and went out in the front yard and took some pictures. Um, my husband followed me down the street and <laughs> we took some pictures and had a little costume constitutional, if you will. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more sewing adventures. I'll see you next time.